Hi all, let's look at another amazing game of Leela the 20 network. So this is Leela ID 21740 against Laser 1.6. So this is provided by David Grosvenor, the fast and furious 40 moves per two minutes time control with a two second increment. Let's have a look. G3, this is the opening book given is this. So you might want to use this with white, it avoids a lot of opening theory. It's an independent system like King's Engine attack basically. C6. We have Knight C3 here actually, not committing a pawn yet. Bishop B4, this is the end of the book. Now Leela in this position plays E4. So this is already very energetic. You might have thought that D3 would be needed or, or some preparation. Black played Knight E7. It turns out here on bishop take c3 trying to win a pawn this is no good at all because if we're taking like this we've got now queen takes d8 check and then knight g5 hits f7 and e4 so a nice little trick to be aware of this would be a nice advantage for white uh, with that dark square bishop as well you know it can can run rampant later on the dark squares for example with multiple threats so knight takes e4, yeah, that's a nice position. So we go back here. Uh, black actually played knight e7. And now both sides castled. Rook e1, b6. Taking on c3 here. Again, it's uh, mostly pointless now. White can avoid um, the glare of the queens by taking like this and be able to recapture on e4 with the rook. So that keeps a certain small edge here for white. So rook e1, b6 was played. And now e5, bishop takes c3. And now b takes, so capturing towards the center. c5, h4, very aggressive now already. So this point, e5 is kind of overprotected. And this is a good basis for an attack, as we've seen in many other leader game examples. Bishop a6, h5, yeah, with the threat of the form pawn, h6 now. So black plays h6. Uh, let's see if black doesn't play h6. Knight d7, h6. This is dangerous. d3, for example. And now bishop g5. And now an idea of going like this to f4 with the queen. And it gets extremely dangerous. If black has to play f6 here, then this is a big advantage for white, this kind of scenario where e6 is a major target. It's just a horrible uh, position as an example. So h6 is played. We have d3. The bishop drops back. d4 actually now. <laughs> you might think that's a bit strange, but it does lock in that bishop totally. Uh, queen c7. g4, very aggressive to play g5 now. Knight bc6. If black tries to play a kind of liberating move f6 here, then white simply takes and then presses on with g5. This position is very pleasant indeed for white. There's things like this happening bang, bishop takes d5. So this is like a disaster for black as an example. So knight bc6 not touching the f pawn, bishop h3. And this also adds punishment for the f pawn later when g5 is played. So bishop a6, we have g5 here, hg. And you might think, well, it's a very strong position for white already, in fact. Knight takes g5 is sufficient and strong. Uh, for example, this continuation shows white has very good attacking prospects here. For example, like this is 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 winning. It's a very, very strong position already, but we have h6, which may be even one of the, the technically strongest moves available, ripping open lines in a guaranteed fashion. Uh, on bishop takes g5, again, this is just really strong. If played correctly by white, we end up with winning scenarios like this, which are embarrassing for black chatmate. So yeah, it's all pretty strong. h6 is played, and now the idea to rip open the lines to get rid of the protection around black's king. Rook f b8 is played. Uh, there isn't too much for black to do here. If f6, then yeah, bishop takes e6 check, taking here. This is just, uh, the king is just far too exposed. And this kind of thing is really dangerous. 
it's just crashing through. Yeah, Black's King safety is shot to pieces. So Rook FB8 was played, not F6. The Queen comes in for the, for the attack. And now Queen H6 with ideas of Bishop F6 to mate on G7. So Queen C8 trying to put up some resistance with Queen F8. Bishop F6, Queen F8, Queen H5. We have Queen C8. Black is just waiting here to be checkmated, basically. F4. This makes things extremely uncomfortable for black. Black played queen e8. f4 has its own particular venom here. For example, if c takes, then bishop takes e6 is crushing. Because if queen takes, now we've got f5 driving the queen away. And say that, then there's queen h6 mating on g7. Otherwise, yeah, it's, it's just total disaster. Uh, so let's have a look at this again. Uh, so yeah, this this is a real crush. If F takes, then we just take on G6 and glide the king here to make way for the rook to come in for the final coup de gras with checkmate. So F4, we have rook. We have pardon me. We have queen e8. The rook comes in. Yeah, just to say basically, I'm going to play rook G3. I'm going to pin this knight, and then I'm going to checkmate with queen H8. That's the basic plan here. It's all pretty strong by this point. Bishop e2 is desperate. So that's just taken. Yep. Bishop takes e6 now. So with the same idea as earlier in a variation, just to mate on g7 now. So this is just desperate. This check taking. There's nothing really for black to do. Knight d3 check. That's taken. And Queen H8 checkmate. Now I enjoyed this game particularly because I've played a number of Blitz and Bullet games where the King's Engine uh, attack system does lead to very good kind of leaning over the King side when you have an overprotected pawn on E5. So maybe this is a good game example for King's Engine attack players that really don't want to learn too much theory. It's really quite an aggressive system. And so some interesting points and finesses to note here, how E4 was played without any preparation with D3. Uh, and another point, um, just, you know, G4, G5, just smashing through. Bishop H3 was nifty to keep an eye on E6 to try and make F6 even more difficult. But also uh, the resulting tactics with Bishop takes E6 are very interesting. So all in all, yeah, a kind of King's Engine attack used with overprotection of E5 to create a, a formidable attack, very difficult to defend. If you enjoyed the game as much as me, then please click the top left box, which should appear, appear shortly to become a member of chessworld.net. That's with my reference ID 1053, and you can get to play other YouTubers, or I can invite you for games later with that. You can also check uh, the YouTube analysis of these videos in advance from the Improve menu, Learn from the Masters. So I may be uh, providing analysis updates of the underlying PGNs you might want to check out. Okay, comments, questions, likes, shares, appreciated. Thanks very much.